Give me the proper reaction to last night's game. I think you should be impressed with the Celtics. And it was a reminder that despite not being battle tested through the first three rounds because they faced opponents that were missing their stars, that they were the number one team throughout the regular season for a reason. And if Dallas is going to be in this series, it's going to have to look like it did in the third quarter, which was ferocious defensive effort and Luka Doncic being otherworldly. Uh, but they got to be able to extrapolate that over 48 minutes. Can they? I think they can. I don't think we're going to see every game being, uh, you know, just a passing clinic from the Celtics on one end and uh, them thwarting everything Dallas tries to do on the other, as we saw for most of the first half. Uh, and certainly in that 14-0 run that the Celtics responded with in the third after Dallas cut it to eight. But I, I think there was a statement type of win for them uh, in game one. And I talked to some of the guys on the team leading up to game one, and it, it was a really confident group. Uh, you know, I, I ran into Sam Cassell the night before game one out in the North End, and he was saying, like, we're rested, we're ready. Uh, we don't necessarily have to have any guy be great to win this series, whereas they kind of need Luca and Kyrie to be great to have a chance against us. Um, it, it's a group that feels like this is their moment. What did you make of Kyrie's performance or lack thereof last night? I was surprised to see it, quite frankly. I mean, obviously, he was the storyline coming in because of his history with the Celtics, and he it was great in the Western Conference Finals, but uh, it was mostly ineffective. Uh, even when he got into the paint, uh, they seemed to find ways to siphon him off. And I was interested in his post-game comments where you know he was kind of taking a 30,000 foot view in, in terms of well we're good to get this finals experience under our belt um for uh, maybe showing his hand a little bit um where he thinks this could be you know kind of a tough learning series for his team uh, that they may have to build on in the future yeah i'm watching last night and i marvel at boston's offense i think it is I mean, it's been historically great. And then you throw in the defense, you know, they're not going to be beaten. Uh, Dallas can win this series. I don't want to overreact to it. I have Boston winning this. I just think that offense is really, really difficult to try to stop. And now you bring Porzingis off the bench. Is he going to come off the bench? Is that his role going to be in the in the finals? You know, well, Joe Mazzola said there would be no minutes restriction on him. Obviously, it worked, um, uh, the rotations that he was getting against Dallas personnel. Uh, and, and so I would imagine, at least for game two, that would be the plan. Um, but, you know, it, it quite frankly, it didn't necessarily matter. As great as Porzingis was, I mean, 20 points, 8 for 13 shooting, 6 rebounds, 3 blocks, he was just one part of the cog. Now, I will say his initial energy got – the crowd into a tizzy. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it was a sight to behold. Like, I think when we talk about the annals of NBA history and in the future, and we talk about a guy coming back from an injury uh, and not skipping a beat, this will be the example A that we point to of Chris Christoph Porzingis performing 38 days missing because of that calf strain and, um, you know, was as confident as any player on the court.